Welcome to another episode of 72 Pink Connector. With me this week, we have Tom. Slow down! And Adam. Hello. Speed it up! You sound lucky you were right there, Adam? Hot day. (laughs) I wasn't ready for that one. Neither was I. You can't be catching me off guard like that. See? My bad. Thought you guys were professionals. No, absolutely not. I quit. I quit. Uh, what exactly are you quitting? I'm sitting here? I don't, I don't know. I mean, we, we don't do much to quit. Oh. I'm still quitting. We, oh, okay. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. yeah. No, 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 Tom. But anyway. Um, Hi. Yes. So as you see, once again, Josh out. Um, yeah, no, the board did really not fire him. Yes. He will be no, back. He's not actually dead either, by the way. Yeah. Yes, yes, he, he's not actually dead. Not that we dead. have to clarify that. It's, it's conspiracy. He's actually dead, yeah. but we don't want to tell you that. We know that viewership would fall through the floor <laughs> if everyone found out Josh was dead. Yep. Yeah, we don't want to be suspects. So um, when you start noticing that his takes seem awful similar from the previous podcast, <laughs> and that his video seems very patchy... It's yeah. not suspicious. We yeah, promise. no, we yeah. totally wouldn't. He, he cut plays together. the same games every week. He plays the same games every week. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. well, as long it's, as we do say he's playing Rocket League, I mean, it, it kind of does fit <laughs> the bill. I mean, we we did play something this week, so you can go back in our Twitch vods and actually see something that we played. <laughs> something. Yeah. This something. week. Something. Something. Okay. Anyway. Wow. So, how would y'all's weeks go? My week went very well. I don't yeah. really have much to say about it, other than it was just like a nice, easy week. Nothing it, bad happened. You seem to be uh, playing a little more this week than normal. Get a little more uh, free time with it being closer to home, or just later starts, or? I only played four things. That's not that much more. No, I mean time-wise, though. I mean like oh, you, time-wise, you, were, yeah. you were playing like right, you played yeah. right up until when I started Kerbal, and I'm like, holy shit! Adam's oh still yeah, off. that night. That night was uh, one of those rare exceptions where I don't have to be at work like hella early in the morning, really far away from home. So I actually got to stay up later that day. And then I was off Wednesday. So I stayed up late Tuesday. Okay. But uh, yeah, I did get some more gaming time in. That was actually nice. I'm so used to like coming home, being tired and, and doing stuff around the house and you know, maybe editing the video for something or, or audio for something and then, you know, going to bed. Most of my game time really ends up being like Friday and Saturday. And then yeah, you normally Saturday. run pretty late on Fridays. Right. Yeah. But uh, this week I actually got to play during the week and it was cool. It's nice. Nice. How was your guys' weeks? Um, busy. I said it every week, though. It was, it was busy. Yeah, you're always I, busy. What are you so busy for? I don't know. I should quit my job. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. doesn't give me anything except you know, <laughs> money. I don't need Nobody that. Nobody that. No one no. needs it. I don't need money when I got video games, which I actually played yeah. a decent amount of this week. For being so busy, I got a lot of gaming oh. in. It was good. Yeah, it looks like a nice long list of games here. I can yeah. see on the show notes. It was it was good times. So uh, so Eric, your your week. My week. Yeah, um, it was your week. It was a week. Was no, it? it was um, it was eh. I didn't get to play any the stuff I really wanted to play this week, but I did some stuff. Nothing notable, I think. Yeah, nothing I notable. See, I see one, one notable thing in here. But yeah, but I mean, like through the week, other than game shit, there's really nothing notable. I, um, I went to a store where I didn't have to check out. I just grabbed shit and went, and that was kind of cool. I enjoyed that. But other than that. Oh, the, uh, yeah, the Amazon yeah. thing. Yeah. Repping, it, repping the company brand. Disclaimer, yeah, I, disclaimer. They kind of pay our bills. Yeah, but I kind of oh, gave yeah, them the yeah, money yeah. on that one, so fuck them. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's nothing real notable. I had to stay at work a little late a couple nights, so like Kerbal, I was busting my balls to get home. It's like, oh, got there yeah. just in time. <laughs> but Adam was keeping me company. He was streaming through the week, nice. so I was able to watch on the bus, which is nice. Nice. Yeah. How long I, is your uh, bus trip every day? Um... On the way in, uh, probably eh, between a half hour, 45 minutes. Yeah, on, the, on the way home, That's it can April. take a little longer. The way home, it can take yeah. an hour, hour 15 sometimes. 
But that's cool because you're not having to actively drive that whole time. So that's technically time you could kind of do stuff. Yeah. Oh my god, I sleep. On phone or switch or something. The only problem with the phone is I get dead spots on the route. Oh, it's like yeah. I was explaining to you, like on your uh, yeah. lost and found, <laughs> it was like this is getting a really cool spot, and then I don't get to see it because it like lags on me. <laughs> it's like no, yeah, I wanted to see that. We're we're being called out in chat for uh, shameless mentions of Amazon employment. I think they're on to us. <laughs> this is actually a giant ad. No big deal. Just the whole for podcast, a giant fifty episodes. No, no, no. The point is, we want to make sure it's clear that we work for them. So when we talk about their product. Like their I game don't care break- if you guys know if I work for them or not. Like, like their game Breakaway, which was actually pretty shit. I still want to try <laughs> it because it seems like something I might enjoy because I am into those type of sporting games. You won't games. like this. You should play it and I will play it with you, but don't expect a good time. But I want to win. Uh, yeah, it's it just it didn't feel well. Do you want to win that, in Super it's Bowl? Alpha. It's an alpha. I keep knocking <sighs> games that are alphas. And no, I yeah, didn't want to win in Super Bowl because Super Bowl was, Supra Ball was flawed. Supra. Supra. In the Ball. sense that um, you could just launch it past the goalie with ease. Where yeah. in Rocket League, it takes a little skill to like hit the ball a certain way. In like FIFA, you have so many people on the field, it's hard to push past. And there's a thing of offsides. In this, mm-hmm. you can effectively shoot it full court without an issue. Yeah. So offsides yeah. is meaningless. If you can get into a game. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's, if there's you always can that. navigate the, the worst main menu of all time. The GUI design is cool, <laughs> but not for a game no, at it's all. Not, it's not even uh, cool. It wasn't cool. It looked like a it was shitty bad. website or something. No, yeah. I, I like the um, <laughs> at central app hub that spawns off shit, but not for a game. It effectively yeah. was its own launcher. Yeah, it was. It kind was of, like, yeah. uh, can, I, can I say this? Am I going to get fired? I kind of think having that through Uplay would have been a better launching experience. <sighs> Who? Yeah, I don't have issues with third party stuff. It works for me. You're the only one. I, the only one. You know, people make a big really have, fits, <clears throat> if tissy about it. I really don't think it's much of an issue. You just sign in, you're it's, done. It's not. The, it's not so much that it's an issue. I just would rather not have all this stuff installed if I don't need to. Steam is convenient because all my games are there. That's it. I open Steam. I pick a game. Yes, but, but then you're, like you're selective then. You're saying teams. Steam can do it, but Ubisoft can't. Well, they've already won, right? They've already won. I'm not going to pay... Really? To... You're saying they've already won, so no one else will even try. Don't even try. I'm, I'm just won. saying, like, like, there's a reason I'm not going to watch the new Star Trek series, because it's on CBS's, like, streaming shit. I'm not going to pay for that. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. If it's on Netflix or Hulu, two of the things I already have, I'll watch it. But if it's not there... Yeah, but by the time Hulu came it. around, Netflix already won. But then Hulu went ahead and tried anyway. That's true. So Hulu shouldn't even exist. By your standards, no. Netflix or nothing. Actually, you know what? Steam or nothing. The internet shouldn't exist. No, it shouldn't. We had perfectly good good. like live video things before Twitch even came about. So everyone, uh, hook up your rabbit ears and uh, go to channel channel (laughs) 2,945 to go to the 72-pin connector broadcast channel. And then you can watch us there. so if the you want to chat, send us a letter. <laughs> so competition is good, obviously. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm only ever going to use Steam. But Steam has a huge variety of games. And Uplay has how many? Their own All games. All of Ubisoft's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Origin has how many? Or, all of the now, EA in games. all honesty, Origin has probably got a decent count of games. Because it's EA they, published games. Yeah, EA's they've published gotten, a fuck ton. Yeah, I, I will say this but, about Origin. It's, so from using Origin this week, uh, I will say that it is so much better than it was when it first oh, launched. God. It used to be I still, I still don't okay. like it. I still don't like using it, right? But it is way yeah. better than it was. When, I, when it first launched, uh, the first time I had to use it was Battlefield 3. Yes. A um, long time ago. And... The original version of the Origin downloader was, you know, I couldn't just install the game from the disc that I bought. I bought a physical disc of Battlefield 3 at the time. You put the disc in, it installs some of it, and then it has to download the rest from the Origin thing. Now, Isn't if something that what happens Valve to your did? internet in the middle of the download, the entire thing would be canceled and you'd have to start from scratch. Oh, oh that's shitty. That's really <laughs> shitty. But the force of the download of the platform, though, didn't Valve do that with Half-Life? They did. So with Probably. Half-Life 2, I got a DVD, an actual box of Half-Life 2, which was weird because that's how you bought games back in the day. 
I, I mm-hmm. imagine that. Um, it was like Dark Ages, man. But anyway, you would buy it and it would install an encrypted copy of the game that you couldn't even play until you installed Steam, verified the key, uh, logged into your account, and then it would download the decryption key. It would decrypt Half-Life 2 on your machine. So yeah, they, it didn't actually download anything except the key, but that decryption process took, on my shitty gaming rig, a um, couple hours, I want to say. Like, I, I had a mm-hmm. really shitty machine, but it, it took a while to decrypt. No, it's just, to me, it's Steam went through their shitty phase. I mean, a lot of people avoided Steam because they saw it as bloatware. Oh, no, it wasn't even just bloatware. It actively was hostile. It erased your Half-Life <laughs> saves. So they, they did a nice thing where they said, hey, if you have any Half-Life key, we'll give you the whole box set, plug it into Steam. And I was like, oh, sweet. So I've got all this stuff, and I'm going to get Ricochet. Thank God. And, and I'm going to get Team Fortress 2 and other games that I didn't, or Team Fortress 1. I'm, I'm going to get stuff that I didn't have before. Um, so I, I plugged it in and it erased all of my Half-Life saves. Steam was really shit back in the day. Um, and there, there are plenty of ancient, ancient internet memes about Steam. Um, some of right. which I've been saving and archiving because they're pretty hard to find today. Steam was really, really shitty. Um, everyone before Steam used to play on WAN, the World Opponent Network. And you know what? It worked way better than Steam back in the day. I really wish they would have brought Juan back. Anyone who was a, a Counter-Strike player way back in the day can tell you Juan was the shit. And when Steam came in, it was trash. And they forced us to use it. And that's my yeah. thing for saying I, I really don't like all the flack the third parties get. If you say you don't like them, that's fine. But I mean, to be against them, I think is being a little closed-minded. Just from a consumer standpoint, it's just kind of a hassle. That's yeah, really all it but is. So Steam, though, because you have to have Steam the to play the, the games you've bought. Yeah, but sort of. No, some, you, if you, yeah, you get a, a new launcher, rig, right? you can't get your games without getting Steam first. Yeah, no, I, I totally get yeah. that. But that said, I think it's, I don't know, it's even a worse experience to go into the start menu and find my game or to type in the name of my game. Gog no. is the only no. one. Hmm? Yeah, sorry, sorry, I got cut off. But Gog's the only one who actually does it like you said, the always open way where you buy the game, go where you want. So it's just, I don't know. I think people are being nitpicky. And they're saying, well, yeah. we like this one, not this one. So we'll let this I, one go and complain about this one. I would it's- agree. I would agree with that. Um, and I, I have installed launchers for very specific type, types of games. So itch.io uh, kind of took over where other platforms failed. And they're the super indie, super hipster. I made this in a game jam over a weekend. It's a super shitty indie game, but you're never going to find it anywhere else. Like I, I installed mm-hmm. their launcher to play those weird indie titles that literally no one has heard of. Um, and Steam, it, they will never be shown on Steam, right? I installed the GOG launcher because I really like supporting GOG. I really like buying games through them, but I don't have to, right? Um, I, I don't know. It, it is annoying. It's kind of a hassle, and I agree there should be competition. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just don't like Uplay. Fuck Ubisoft. But then again, I don't like EA, so fuck Origin, right? If oh, Nintendo yeah. said, hey, we're re-releasing a bunch of shit on the PC, I'd be like, wow, oh my god, this is amazing. And NES games only cost $200 a piece. I'm buying all of them. <laughs> yeah, but then you remember that oh, they wow. have an online platform you have to use on their phone that they were touting as this yeah. amazing thing. And right. still to date, you launch this app, there is one game in it. Yep. Splatoon. That's just it. it. That's it. No <laughs> Mario Kart, no nothing. No FIFA, wow. just, nothing. Just Splatoon. So I, that, I want to get on that real quick. We're here. I want to do it. What the fuck is Nintendo doing right now? I mean, honestly, oh. I was one of the few people standing up and saying, you know what? A phone app, you can do some really cool stuff online with a phone app. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a secondary device. You can really have some cool matchmaking, some calendar integration, some fun stuff. Dude, they are completely shitting the bed. The voice comms suck. You can't match with friends in half the fucking games you want to play. Only one goddamn game uses it. Um, so whereas Sony and Microsoft have got uh, the platform and the weight to throw around to say, hey, if you are launching FIFA on this platform, you will use Xbox Live. You will use Sony's online system. You will use these things or you won't be online. That's the way this is going to work. And Nintendo also, is trying to be... So Nintendo has had typical, uh, typically really shitty third-party support. Um, so they're trying to get people to come back. They're trying to say, no, just please. Look, you can do whatever you want with the online. You can use our really shitty online or you can build your own. Just 
launch a game on the Switch. Any game. We don't care what it is. <laughs> Superman 64. Put it on there. We don't give a shit. However, they're not using their own goddamn platform. They're not. They're not at all. Yeah. I mean, it's an indictment. Yeah, if you're Ma- not Mario Kart- to use your own dog food. Mario Kart does not use the Switch's online platform, except for the back end. Yes. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, it's terrible. A, I, I agree. And... I mean, that said, we are complaining about something that's not officially launched yet. We have never had to pay a dime for this system. Yet. Yeah. Yet. Now, here's what's going to suck. Um, I can see them using this as a Xbox Live subscription where you have to have this to be able to play online. And what's going to suck is they'll kill Mario Kart back end for you yep. if you don't have this. Yes, they will. Even though it doesn't touch the app. They will. Um, that said, it, from the rumors, it's going to be 20 bucks a year. It's cheap. It, it is cheap. Um, but that said, it's 20 bucks for something cheap. that's worse than worthless. They are, <laughs> they are saying that they're going to give you a free game with it every month or something, rotating yeah, game. Yeah, it, That'd be okay. I don't want Ice Climbers for the 75th time. I really <laughs> don't. I don't need Urban Champion for the 27th time. So those two games, I don't own at all because no. So, but now if they said, hey, look, we're going to give you Ocarina of Time. We know you've been paying for this game 27 times every year we re-release it. Yeah, I'll sign up. No, they're not giving that for free, man. No way. Yeah, it's not going to happen. It's like, here's Super Mario Brothers 2, the shitty American version. Yeah. (laughs) Doki Doki Panic, Mario skin. Done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But (laughs) anyway. (sighs) um, that was Back, a big, long tangent. Yeah, it was. How the fuck that happened? I don't Sorry. know. I ate at a barbecue place. That was really good. Oh, my God. They had good brisket. Really good nice. brisket. I, I'm, I, I have a deep, soft spot for barbecue. It was so good. I still oh, have I've got a large, point. soft spot for barbecue. It's about right here. <laughs> right here in the middle. Yeah. It's well delicious. Done. Well done. But I still stand with my statement. Any place that's good at smoking meats has a good brisket. I've never been a place where it's like, this brisket uh, sucks, but all the rest of their stuff is good. I have. I've had some bad brisket. But at a place Brisket's that had good other stuff, though? Yeah, I've seen really good out. pulled pork in a bad brisket. I've seen them both. It's Brisket's rare. easier I'll give to you dry out. Rare. Yeah. That's, I've just, that's an issue in some places. I've just never been to a place where it's like, you know, <clears throat> this, this smoked pulled pork, or this pulled pork is delicious. But this brisket is terrible. I've never had that experience. I will say this about the place. Um, uh, it's, their sauce was weird. Even their sweet sauce was kind of spicy. It was, it was odd. Their medium wasn't really medium. It was kind of a mild. But everything had this weird spice to it. And it was in everything. Luckily, the meats come uns- hmm. unsauced, so you can go buy your own sauce, which I think is what I'm going to do from now on. Um, but they had... Uh, coleslaw and I fucking loathe coleslaw. I hate yeah. coleslaw. <laughs> I do too. I'm I right liked it. You. It was good at this place. It was really good, really? but it was spicy coleslaw. It was fucking weird. <laughs> the baked beans were spicy. Everything. It. The white bread you was spicy. Spiced. So, question for you, Adam, because I know this yeah. answer because I've talked to him already. <clears throat> when yeah. you go to a barbecue joint outside of cornbread, which is a given, I think everywhere. What yeah. is one of the most normal sides you'll ever see at any barbecue spot. Mac and cheese. Right? Yes. This place had no mac and cheese. They had no cornbread. They didn't None. have no cornbread either? No cornbread, no mac and cheese, no, no mashed cornbread? potatoes. cornbread? That's yeah. a travesty. Dude, I question that you went to a good spot. The meat was delicious. It was fantastic meat. They just missed everything else around barbecue. Was it seasoned well or was it just cooked well? Uh, cooked well. So all they knew how to do was put the meat that's, to temperature and time. That's okay. That's okay, right? I'm, I'm in the most unlikely place to find good barbecue, and I have found decent smoked meat. I am happy. Dude, there's a <laughs> lot of barbecue joints around here. I'm going to have to show you some. All right. I will go. I will go. There, there's some good ones around go here. Go exploring. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so my next plan when I go there is I'm going to get a half pound of brisket, half pound of pulled pork, go buy my own sauce, do it nice. myself. Yeah. It was good, though. Yeah. Nice. Well. Yeah, and with that barbecue, Adam. Sir, barbecue. We will start with you this week. Start. What have you been playing? Oh, I've played some video games. He's I played some, some Rocket League games. today. Um, actually, I've been playing Rocket League a little bit throughout the week. Um, I finally got my ranks back to where they were last season, so that's good. Oh, nice. Got all my all my placements done for the new season. Um, I still got to finish my placements. Yeah. So I, I wound, wound up uh, champion and everything except for 1v1, which I'm like diamond one, which is about where I was last season. So um, Diamond one? Yeah, 
for 1v1. Oh, okay, okay. I was going to say, I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> I'm the same rank as Adam. <laughs> when did this happen? No, 1v1's hard. It's, it's harder for me to rank up 1v1. I think it's pretty common for most people have a lower 1v1 rating than their other playlists. Yeah, I think standard Unless and doubles are always player. high. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think duels, I've always had higher than solo standard, though. Yeah, so, well, solo standard is kind of a, I don't know. <laughs> That's its own beast, and I think most people don't like it that much. So most people don't play it that much, therefore the rank is lower. Mm. But, um, so yeah, I played a little bit of that. Not much really new to talk about. I'm, kind of, I'm back on the Dominus, so yeah. I've settled on a car again. <laughs> flat Earth or Flat Car Society. Flat Car Society. <laughs> Good the shit. cars are flat just like our earth okay um, let, me, let me let me take a sidetrack on that did you guys see about uh, i don't know the rapper that's doing it he put a gofundme to raise a hundred and fifty thousand dollars or something like that i think he eventually uh, upped it to a million because he realized his gross underestimation on how much this would cost but he's wanting to fund creating his own satellite to launch into space to prove the earth is flat that nasa is nothing more than a conspiracy feeding back these images about the curve he took a picture 12 miles outside of New York and said, I can see the buildings, therefore no curve. And Neil deGrasse oh Tyson God. was responding to him like, actually, you realize you can't see like the bottom 20 feet of these buildings. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, dude, it, th that's a legit thing. He sets a GoFundMe because he thinks for, I think it was maybe a quarter of a million. Don't he thinks for a quarter million, he can make a satellite, launch it up into space take pictures and transmit the information back down. If that's how much it costs, NASA would have thousands of satellites oh. around everything in the universe. So Jesus solar Christ. systems. Doesn't, doesn't he know though that when he does prove that the earth is flat, because it is clearly that if you look at the turtle holding the world up, you will bring about the apocalypse. Turtle. I thought it was Atlas. No, it's a turtle. Oh, oh, that's we, right. Oh. Atlas is the myth because the Earth's yeah. not round. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's not holding up a globe, dude. No, it's turtle holding a disc on his back. That's the way it is. Clearly. And then, like the tectonic uh, okay. plates we experience, is actually his shell slowly shifting over time. Yeah, yeah. He's just he's yeah, crawling he, a little sometimes, bit. Sometimes that's, that's when he hits like yeah. a pebble or something. He's like, oh fuck. Sometimes oh, he gets cold and starts shivering, and that's when there's yeah. earthquakes. Yeah. What's a volcano? It's like a big pimple on his back. No, no. Vol <laughs> volcanoes don't exist. They're a conspiracy <laughs> made by the government. Dude, we have yeah. like two right by us. Everybody <laughs> knows if you got close enough to a volcano to see it, your eyes would burn out. Right? By high-powered lasers. But, uh, yeah, we digress. <laughs> Holy crap. So, <laughs> video games. Back to video games. So, I was about to move off of Rocket League, and then uh, Dobby and chat brought up a good point. There's a DLC coming next week. Um, oh, yeah. There... You may remember a couple months back, they released a Dodge Ice Charger, a promotional thing for the newest Fast and the Furious movie. Um, Tokyo Drift. There is a, another Fast and the Furious DLC coming this next week. Uh, this time, these two cars were from, I believe, the first movie. Um, just the Fast and the Furious. Is the one oh, I'm sorry. One of, them's, one of them's from the Fast and the Furious. So you've got a 1970 Dodge Charger RT. The other one's from um, Tokyo Drift? Tokyo no, the Drift. other one is from Too Fast, Too Furious, ah. which is the 99 Nissan Skyline GTR R34. I refuse to buy any Rocket League DLC until they come out with Tokyo Drift. Oh. I actually and, and like and I want, that movie. I want no. the handbrake to be constantly on on whatever car that is. <laughs> no matter what. You, you have to drift the whole yeah. time. Nice. Drift only. Am I I've actually one? tried to play that way before. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> it's really hard to control. Yeah. I like so, um, that movie, but though. These, I did. I, everyone Which, hates I, I, I saw Tokyo the Drift. first Fast and Furious. The only and I've one seen I've nothing seen is else. The first one. Yeah. I just don't care about cars. That's I just fair. don't. Am I the but these cars look really nice. Yes. Yeah, yes, they do. By the, the way, cars do, that, that skyline looks so, fucking sick. I know the game has rocket powered cars, so there's only so much you can do to make like real cars in the game. But I really like seeing just kind of regular looking cars in the game instead of like super crazy, uh, round, pointy airplane looking stuff or you know like these just look like regular cars with a giant rocket thing on the back of it so you don't and, want them to look like a supersonic aerobatic rocket powered battle cars uh did he just say I that mean, right 
Did I no. just say that right? It's pretty close, though. Oh, <laughs> damn. RS took me to school the other night on that. <laughs> yeah. Ah, so what uh, else you been good. up to, Adam? It's a valiant effort. Yeah. The other thing I have been playing is Cuphead still. Oh, shit. We got to talk about um, Cuphead. Cuphead is really, really, really good. Yeah. And I know is. I said this last week. I don't really have a lot new to add. So I got through the first, um, the first aisle, whatever. Then you cross the bridge and you have a whole second section. Um, and I have everybody done in that second section except for this one clown at this roller coaster. And he was kicking my oh. ass the other day. Jesus Christ. That part looks incredibly difficult. The whole thing is incredibly difficult. It is. There is to, no <laughs> but, uh, easy mode to cut. But no, that but boss in particular, I thought, looked yeah. possibly one of the hardest because you're jumping and dodging at the same time because there's a roller coaster thing. And yep. then the roller coaster yep. thing, once you dodge it, has people on it you have to dodge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's stupid. All the while, there are things in the air that if you jump into when you're dodging from the roller coaster or the people on it, you get hit. Yes. So one thing, one thing I noticed Relentless. about Cuphead's design um, is mm -hmm. that there are run and gun levels, but it doesn't feel like a typical classic game where you've got a run and gun level up until you get to a boss room. They're completely right. segmented. In the run and gun yeah. levels, from what I understand, they're fairly few and far between compared to the boss fights. I actually yeah. really like that because the run and gun I levels do too. aren't really that fun. I mean, they're there, right? It would feel like something is missing if they weren't there. Mm -hmm. But they said, eh, they, they probably looked at this in while they were designing the game, and they said, eh, these just aren't really that fun. They get really repetitive. So we're let's just pepper them through in a couple places. So, but the boss fights are the spotlight. Well, this was initially... So fun fact. Yeah. Okay, Adam, I think you're going to touch it. Do it. Yeah, Do it. So initially, when they were showing this game off a long time ago, the original scope of this game was just boss fights. And there were a handful of them. It wasn't a very big game. Um, somewhere down the line, they showed that trailer at E3 and some other stuff, and it got a lot of hype. So two of the developers of this game quit their jobs. They remortgaged their houses. And they expanded the scope of this game to what it is now. Jesus. So those run and gun levels were never a part of the original game. Okay. Those were added in after they expanded the scope of the game. And I'm not sure about the plane levels, the, but um, I like him. I, I sure really the, like the him. I like the plane. the plane. The plane ones are some of my favorite levels. I love those. Those are a lot of fun. But yeah, I can't imagine quitting your job and remortgaging your house on this game that's not even out yet. Dude, not an existing fucking... IP that has a fan base already. It's literally just this new game but that got a lot of hype. Apparently, they've made some money because Cuphead, Cuphead yeah. is selling really, really well. And it's gotten it's, it's... excellent reviews. So here's the thing. How much did they actually get? Because Microsoft, I think, ended up funding a good bit of it. Too. Yeah. So let's see. So Cuphead I mean, there, there may be sales. something where like, yeah, you get X percent of the sales and we're taking X percent because we are funding you through this development process. As of two days ago, uh, PC Games... Uh, N, I guess, uh, it's reporting that Cuphead has sold more than 300,000 copies. That ain't bad. Nice. That ain't bad at that's all. That's not bad at all. For for what's typically considered a, a little indie game, that's really mm -hmm. good. It's been out, what, a week now? Yeah. A little over a week? Something like that? A little, a little over a indie week. game? <laughs> okay. That is a, hand a little A that's, little it's... indie game that has been featured in yeah. E3 for a couple of years, and people have been clamoring for it, and it generated insane amounts of hype, and it's actually as good to play as it is to look at that yeah, little indie game. It really game. is. I'm really impressed at just how complete of an experience it is and how polished it is. So have you, have you seen, and uh, this is being brought up in chat, have you seen some of these speedruns of Cuphead? No. No, I haven't. I saw an A-plus no-hit speedrun. It was insane. I guess uh, Dark Soul Invader is reporting that the world, world record is 31 minutes. Holy nuts. crap. That's nuts. insane. That's crazy. Absolutely nuts. That honestly, I think, is muscle memory. It's got to be. It has to be. There's no way. Because that is just absurd. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's, that's nuts. Game, game is excellent. I'm, I, I really look I'm forward so to it. I'm so impressed that they hand drew all of those animations out. Yep. Yes. Oh, they're beautiful. The whole anime, not just like, just hey, we beautiful. make an initial character design and then animate it with the computer. No, they drew out the animations and then they digitized them and then somebody colored them. Yeah, this is this is one of the Crazy. things that we can look at as kind of a, a perfect example of 
uh, graphics versus aesthetics, because as far as technical graphics, this game isn't that impressive. It's a 2D no. side scroller with big sprites, with some filters big and look. stuff. Who the fuck cares, right? But from yeah. an aesthetic point of view, it is perfect. Everything yeah. blends together from the music to the sound design to the menus mm-hmm. to the actions. Everything fits and it feels really cohesive. Well, I was going to say it's the perfect, like, it's the most beautiful way I've ever seen of analog medium being brought into a digital product like this. I completely it is agree. just yeah. Yeah. beautifully done. Yeah, that's really good. Um, totally agree. I, I love that soundtrack. The music is so good. It I, is wish I, the, I wish I would have. I wish I would have. Yeah, there's a. a I wish I would have bought the soundtrack on Steam too. There was a bundle you could get with the soundtrack too. How much do they sell the soundtrack for? Just I got it for oh, ten bucks probably, on GOG. Yeah, ten bucks, five or ten bucks. Yeah, I think. Bad. No, it's not bad at all. This is the price not of a normal. CD. I, I How got many it. Tracks are on it. I um I don't know. I'd had I've have the I'd have to look at it. Um, I know the one on GOG, and I'm pretty sure that's the same on Steam. You get an MP3 and a FLAC copy. So if you want to go nice. full crazy, you could. Yeah. If you want to hear the low fidelity, yeah, nineteen thirties music in the highest fidelity, <laughs> <laughs> put it on your record no. player. Hear that snap yeah. and pop. Yeah, but make no, sure you use gold plated connectors <laughs> for your for your digital waveforms. Vinyl is actually making a comeback. Did you know that? Hasn't yeah. vinyl been making a comeback are... for ten years because of people like yeah. Dobby? <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's kind of cool. I mean. I'm not really into it personally, but it's cool. I don't get it. I think people who say it sounds better don't really understand what they're hearing. Because I don't understand. There's no way that it can actually sound better. The digital ability to capture everything. You don't get the, uh, the other sounds coming through it. But the actual quality of what the recording is, is better digital. Here's the thing about quality. It's perceived in audio. So a lot of, a lot of uh, audio productions use equipment from the 70s and 80s and 60s. These are sought after things because, um, you know, when digital came along, everybody was th- basically throwing that stuff out. All this expensive equipment. They were like, nope, digital, it's the way of the future, whatever. And then they start to realize that it sounds so good it sounds kind of lifeless and pristine and there's these interesting qualities of these old uh audio processing units equalizers compressors stuff like that that and the hardware actually impacts the sound onto it and that's uh it can be a really pleasing sound and characteristic so technically yes there might be more information in a digital thing but there's still an argument to be had that um, an analog medium like vinyl might impact a character onto the sound that is more desirable than the original CD sound. That's a good point. Fuck I'll, that. I I'll want the music. <laughs> so Just it's, the it's music. Preference. <laughs> <laughs> so um, AWOL Instant Messenger says there's 56 tracks on the soundtrack. Nice. Damn. That's, that's, that's a solid. lot. Yeah, that ain't yeah. bad. That ain't bad at all. I wonder how many from a little like 15, 20 second quips for like the game over. Yeah. Then here's your results. Probably. And that's how most game uh, OSTs happen. Yeah. Because if Somewhat. that's the case, this, is, this isn't like the Doom soundtrack. This is like legit. Here is every piece of music yeah. mm-hmm. that we did, which is cool. Yeah. So yeah, Cuphead, go out, go buy it. It's fucking yeah, I rad. Can't, I can't recommend it enough. It's, it's really good. Um, another game I played this week uh ellipsis um it was my turn to do lost and found this week uh this was a game another game yet another game i got on the humble bundle um installed that bad boy on steam (laughs) redeemed that key uh i was pleasantly surprised i really wasn't expecting much of anything honestly um i think most of the humble games i've gotten that i wanted to play i have played and enjoyed but you know everything else i'm just like ah i could take it or leave it but um, it's all this game. It's a really simple, minimalistic. Uh, I guess it's kind of a puzzle. Not really a puzzle game. It's more of a. How would you describe that? You watch me play it. Um. Was there a, what is the genre? What is the genre for that? Gosh dang it! It's um, it's not a platformer. But the way you maneuver reminds me of a platformer, though. Yeah. Um. So basically, you you play as a little circle and. You control this little circle with your mouse 
and you have to collect these other little circles without getting hit by all the mean things and obstacles and lasers and angry triangles following you around and mines that are exploding. And you just, that's all it is. You use your mouse to navigate through these levels, collect these things without getting hit with shit, and move on to the next one. And it was actually surprisingly fun. It was good. Hmm. Yeah, I remember um, the first few levels, Adam's like, oh, this is easy. This is easy. What's going yeah. on? And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, and then they throw that one in there. It's like, oh, okay, this is what we're going to do. I see. I'm awake now. Thanks. <laughs> so, so, anything else you got this week? Or was the Lost and Found really the end of the new shit for you? Um, I installed the Star Wars beta, and I haven't had a whole lot of time to really get into it. But um, it seems solid. Uh, it felt really good to play. I played maybe two two matches. Hmm. It's good. Yeah. So far, I'm I'm enjoying. So um, for those listening, the postcast game, uh, oh, the yeah. community game night game this week is Star Wars Battlefront Two, which has an open beta going on this weekend. So dust off that old origin install and download the game. It's like 25 gigs. Hopefully you have an insane internet yeah. connection if you're just now hearing about this. <laughs> I, would, I would start that now. By the way, just yeah. a warning. Um, at least we have confirmed for NVIDIA graphics cards. Unless you've got a driver from last week, you will need to update your NVIDIA driver. Yeah, there, I mean, it's yeah. not quite last week, but yeah, like within the last month or two, you're going to need to update. Pretty, so... Because the, the newest driver is from uh, mid-September, I think. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So okay. that's why I'm saying, like, my version was way out of date, but yeah, it's, it, they for, they're forcing you to update your drivers, believably, I think, because it's easier to debug issues when driver stability is not one of the issues you're trying to debug. Yeah, I'm mm. not sure why they were doing it. Maybe they're using something weird and brand new, some new NVIDIA API. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But I'll tell you this. The game it looks did, beautiful. It did throw me. That, oh, it, that it game it looks really good. Game, okay. It looks beautiful. Okay. And, it, and I was surprised. Uh, I don't have like a super new graphics card. It's like, I don't know, a handful of years old. But it actually ran well on my system and hmm. it looked great. I was, you know, it seems like it's optimized as far as I can tell. Nice. I couldn't get Fraps to work on it to capture mm -hmm. for me, but it it ran good. It was well over sixty. That's a name mm -hmm. I haven't heard in a a long, a long time. time. Yeah, yes. I know because Steam Fraps has it for you. But <laughs> yes, Fraps, Fraps. I say. Wow. <laughs> but, Jesus. Um, that uh, old yeah. thing. Adam, what class were you playing? Uh, I was Androids. I only played the the couple matches, and I was Androids. Uh, I just did like. Every time I die, I'd do a different one. I'd pick a different one. Ah. Uh, um, I kind of like the snipers, and I kind of like the heavy. Um, I, I will only play to support our troops, our good, strong Imperial troops, take down those terrorists that killed <laughs> millions of people when they bombed the Death Star. It was just a research yes. base. Yeah, that's it. They blew it out of the sky. And they're trying Terrorists. to rebel against our empire. Absolutely right, terrible. we're just bringing peace to the galaxy, and they want to cause war. <laughs> Those fucking filthy rebels. Oh my god, I cannot believe them. And the Jedi, they're the worst of them. The worst of them, oh, out of all of them. Yeah. Well, they're the ones back there Sorcerers. pulling all the goddamn strings. Yeah, they're the generals they're of this... Devil of this, magic. This war of, of attrition and tyranny and blood. It's disgusting. All right, but I, Support our troops. Support the drones. Anyway, um, I, or droids. Wow, I just said drones. <laughs> drones? Drones. Um, I do want to talk one a little bit things. about this, though, also. Yeah, um, yeah. So I also had the first one. And mm -hmm. the big problem with the first one was, as AOL and Semester has pointed out, it was really repetitive because there were so few of maps. Mm. Um, I have no issue with having the same game modes as long as you have different maps to make it fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, their maps were very lacking. Uh, the way you upgrade to different heroes and classes made it really stale. You're always running into the same guy using the same cards until all of a sudden a vehicle unlock is on map and whoever gets there first gets it. Here, they've went back to more the original Battlefront 2 style of as you get kills, you get points. With those points, you can purchase a um, a wing. You can purchase an ATAT. -AT. Yeah. You can purchase a Darth Maul and make one run with it. 
So it mm-hmm. keeps that a lot, a lot more fresh than the first remake did. And I like, I like that mechanic. I like the system they've got for that. Yes, it, it feels a lot more back to roots. Mm-hmm. Um, the card system's just like it was in the last one they made, which I think is a good system. It's not a OP kind of play a lot, destroy everyone, because you start with good cards anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, they haven't opened up a lot of maps yet, though. So that underlying issue, they say they have more maps. Yeah. In this beta, we're not going to see it. But they say they have more maps. Okay. So, so, we, so you, you played it some, Eric, didn't you? Did you try the, the star, the whatever no, space battles thing? I only did the ground battles. So okay. I did unlock a ship when I was oh. doing it. Nice. Um, and I will say, air-to-air combat, holy fuck. Yeah? If you're good at that, you're a god. Nice. It is really <laughs> hard to control because you actually... I did this. <laughs> up, or, uh, w and S is your throttles. Mm-hmm. So you really have to be careful with your throttles. And if you clip anything, you die. Yeah. So it, 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 they're powerful, though, is the thing. It's, it's a really good balance where they're hard to use. They're fragile if you hit something, mm-hmm. but they destroy shit. So yeah. it's, it's a really, really good balance. Um, the guns play really well. At first, I thought the sniper class is going to be OP because my first time running with them, like, bam, dead, bam, dead. I'm like, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I realized that I switched to that class at the most optimal time in the map to switch to that class. <laughs> oh, and then okay. Because it, yeah. it's it uh, a objective progression, yeah. like the battlefront mm-hmm. or battlefields. So mm-hmm. as you get further into your progressions, all of a sudden it's like, oh, God, this is not as good as I thought. This is not going to work here. This is not going to work here. So you have to switch between your classes. In each class, you can upgrade to different guns. Right now, Mm -hmm. I'm still base level guns. I'm still hanging with everyone. But I don't know if, like, there's going to be this god tier gun. I doubt it. I don't see them intentionally destroying (sighs) gameplay like that. I would hope not. not. But I was hanging with people. But so far, I'm saying that I'm enjoying this. I This this beta is doing what it... It's there for two reasons. Get them data onto what they need to fix and optimize and mm-hmm. to get motherfuckers like me to want to buy on it, it. <laughs> which I think they've done. Yeah. Well, we'll see how I feel about uh, tonight. That, that said, this is not, I mean, it could very well turn out that I buy this game because Overwatch was fun, but totally not a buy for me. And then I bought it. <laughs> yeah. So these community games are great to expose you to games, but they're also bad for your wallet they're sometimes. Dangerous, dangerous yeah. games. But yeah. yes, everyone, um, it's about an hour to download, an hour and a half if you have some good connections. Uh, so if you don't have it yet, get on Origin, get that free beta. It's free until tomorrow. Even if you don't play with us, pick it up and play it some tomorrow. Yeah. Check it out. It's free. And let, it, let us know what you think about it, too. You could tweet at us at 72 PC Podcast. <laughs> oh, shameless shit. plug. There we go. Oh, yeah. I got you, there dog. We go. I've, I've also got a shameless plug. I, I guess, like, but not a plug in a happy way. Uh, mm-hmm. One of our... One of our buddies in the Discord and in the chat almost died, almost murdered his gaming PC. He almost accidentally installed the NVIDIA GeForce Experience. Oh, God. (laughs) I just want to bring up that the GeForce Experience is the only experience where you can no longer game. Yes, so I actually updated today. It's pretty bad. I never Uh, had many issues with it, but then again, I just avoid it. If I accidentally install it, the first thing I do is make sure it does not get a chance to start up on or run on startup. Yeah, it's it's Mm. bad. It just totally destroyed Steam and home streaming for me. Like, ruined it. Oh, wow. It was bad. That's because you're using Steam and home streaming when you really shouldn't be. I Sorry. only use Parsec today. Anyway. Um, <laughs> do you have anything else there, Adam? No, I, I don't think so. I'm looking forward to playing it some more tonight and get, get an actual, you know, solid play of it. Other like than that, it. chilling. How about chilling. you guys? What you been up to, Tom? Chilling. What you've been uh, on the plane? You know, Cuphead. Go buy it. It's good. Um, Overwatch. Yeah, I, I bought Overwatch, and now I'm I'm really liking Overwatch. I'm having a good time with it. Um, nice. <clears throat> I need to get more people to play with because I was playing with people last night, and that was tons of fun. We were we were in chat. It was great. I totally need more people to do that with. I know I'm totally coming into this far too late. Um, mm. Played a little bit more of her story. I don't know if I talked about this last week. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, it's 
a game where you've got a bunch of video clips and you can search for words inside those video clips mm -hmm. and piece together the entire detective narrative. I've been doing that more and more and more. I've got a notebook and it scribbles everywhere and lines being drawn to things. And I look like a crazy conspiracy theorist. Do you have loins? <laughs> loins to drawn to things. Yes. You should really watch where you draw your loins. No, I draw yes. my loins anywhere and everywhere I possibly can. Nice. So yeah. loins everywhere. Should. Um, Everywhere. other than that, The Witcher 3, I was going to play Overwatch one now. I was like, eh, I kind of go to bed in a half hour. I get like two matches of Overwatch in and then go to bed. Mm -hmm. I wonder what's happening in the world of The Witcher 3. So two <laughs> hours later, I said, oh <laughs> shit, I have to go to bed. It, that world sucks you in. It is so yeah. crazy. The, the writing is excellent. The, the combat's okay, but the, mm -hmm. the lore and the way things happen is just awesome just fantastic i love it i was it. watching a, i was watching a video on the witcher 3 today um if you're familiar with no clip they do video game documentaries they're all really good too so check it out i love um, no clip no clip is great they've got stuff on the 2016 doom rocket league uh there's a witcher thing spelunky and other stuff i can't remember what else there is the witness you should totally watch the it witness if you came yeah the spelunky because spelunky is one of the most underappreciated games for how brilliant that thing is yeah they did, they oh, did yeah. a couple things on frog fractions which was really 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 good hmm. um no clip is awesome it's all on yeah. their youtube channel just go to youtube search for no clip they are right there um, they're right now doing like a five or six part mini series on the Witcher mini series, mm -hmm. meaning like four hours of content. So it's yeah. not mini in any way. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was so watching the one I was watching the one today on the the level design or the world design. Them talking about building the world and, you know, they'd be like running through an area. And, you know, if if there's not something that you can look at or that catches your eye every 30 seconds, they would fix that. So it could be just an NPC strolling through or a little group of animals or a camp outpost or something like that. Uh, their rule of thumb was every 30 seconds, something needs to catch your eye a little bit, even if it's just something to look at. Um, they were talking about how they designed the houses and um, there are so many houses in this game, they couldn't make them all unique, but they also didn't want it to be like, oh, there's house number three. I recognize that house from the other side of the map. They just copied and pasted over. Yeah. So they have like, you know, a handful of them and then some of them are kind of generated and it was, it's just really interesting. Um, I've never heard that much detail about the process of designing a big open world like that. So it's really, it was really cool to see. It seems like they put a lot of Origin. love and care into the way mm -hmm. they built that. So I watched their yeah. um, their 2017 PAX West panel when they got everyone and and the no clip guy that got him up on stage. Oh, um, nice. And uh, there was there's like a story team and a world team and then a loot team and they all kind of interact with each other. So the story team had the story about a village that was starving um, and they were building this after the world team had finished. So playtesters get in and these villagers are talking about starving to death and they've the world team has built these beautiful houses with fresh sausages inside, like <laughs> like hanging over windowsills and stuff. And the, the story team's Whoops. like, um, hey, guys. It, this villager's like, oh, we're starving to death. We don't know what we'll eat. While well, just sausages are in the background of the cutscene, just hanging and floating there. Those are for the king. Yeah, and then and then the loot team didn't know what this world with this area was supposed to be for. So inside of all of the loot stuff, there's like food and things you can grab. <laughs> and so they had to be like, hey, uh, loot team, uh, world team, can you guys can you guys make this like really shitty? Get your food out of here. <laughs> yeah. So it yeah. was absolutely hilarious. Um, I, I highly recommend The Witcher so far. I haven't put in too, I haven't put too many hours into it, but mm -hmm. so far it's the exact kind of RPG experience I wanted. Um, nice. where, whereas Skyrim was a wonderful world to play in, it still felt very gamey to me. The Witcher mm -hmm. does not. The Witcher feels like a world that you happen to inhabit. Um, wow. Yeah, it's it's something where it's an RPG that I give a shit about, basically. All right. It's yeah, good. That was good. It's. I mean, it's gotten such good reviews. It's no surprise. <laughs> it didn't like one of the DLCs actually won uh, a Game of the Year award. Right? Wild Hunt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Wild Hunt was Blood is the wine. main game. Oh, okay. Blood and Wine. Sorry. Blood. Yeah. Whoops. That's pretty Damn impressive. Subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, um, Stardew Valley uh, and Axiom Verge. I bought those both on the Switch the other day. Hi. Um, I. Keep I was thinking... Axiom Verge. Uh, that one's kind of. 
I saw that game. I was telling you this before the cast, but I saw that game and like, oh, it's an old school Metroidvania. Tom's going to buy that and love it. Yep. <laughs> so I'm Tom bought that and loved it. Uh, nice. Good. Um, but it's not Metroidvania. It's not Metroidvania oh, okay. at all. It is oh, okay. Metroid. Oh, so gotcha. it, it does not feel like Super Metroid. It doesn't feel like Fusion at all. Um, it is it is totally, totally old school Metroid. Like we're talking. So so for those who don't know, and actually kind of for me a little bit. Yeah. Describe the difference between old school Metroid, Metroidvania, Castlevania. What, where do those gameplay descriptions come from? What are the, the trademark aspects of each of those? So the Metroidvania is, you know, of course, Metroid and Castlevania mushed together. Castlevania mm-hmm. didn't always used to be this cool Metroid-ish, Super Metroid-ish style of gameplay. Uh, one of the main uh, creators of the series actually went to a game store and saw a bunch of Castlevania games in a bargain bin. He's like, oh, fuck. This is what we've made? Fuck. We so, made the game you get for $5 because no yeah. one wants it anymore. Yeah. So yeah. he's like, okay, all right, we're going to rebuild this shit from the ground up. And then that's when he created Symphony of the Night, which is mm-hmm. one of the greatest games of all time. Um, he, he based it a lot off of Super Metroid and how that flows. Basically, in Super Metroid and later Castlevania games, you'll have a giant sprawling map that all like leads into each other. It's got shortcuts everywhere and secret little hidden places. But at the very start, it's basically a single path and then you'll find Mm -hmm. an item and you'll be able to use that item to branch out into other paths and then you'll find an item up here that'll let you go down here and branch out over here and then do some backtracking and find another thing that you never thought was possible and that's Mm -hmm. basically the whole experience metroid uh the the old school metroid before super metroid is very much that but without the hand holding um super metroid didn't (laughs) i don't want to say hand holding uh super metroid didn't really have any Um, but it was very obvious when you got something, you could go somewhere else with the original Metroid. Mm -hmm. It was, wait, that's a block, but it doesn't have any collision. So I can actually travel through the wall, but there's nothing telling me that it is super old school and super hardcore Uh, and unforgiving. Super fuck you. Find it yourself. Basically. Um, yeah. So the, the newer Metroid games, I don't want to say they have a bunch of handholding because most Mm -hmm. of them don't. But it's a little uh, more player friendly, would you say? Yes, it is. It is. It is very modern. Maybe that's Axiom good, Verge is not. Okay. Um, it's still fun, but you have to know what you're going into. It's definitely a "fuck you, this is retro" kind of game. Okay. Those are always fun. Yeah, it's it's good though. The music yeah. is fantastic. Really fantastic. We live in, we live in such shit. a good world where we can basically play new games of all the styles of all the previous old games. So, um, I mean, there's just a mishmash of everything. No matter what you want to play, there's probably a new game out there that still satisfies that need for whatever, whatever And I'll come is. back to that point exactly after Irks has what he's going to. <laughs> well, because what I was about to say about that is it's really interesting you say that. I was thinking about this today. I heard it on uh, one of the other podcasts I listened to. I'm like, this is it's really true. And we were talking about it a little last night. We're in an era now where a game is produced as 16-bit, as real world, as all these different graphic styles. As someone coming new into gaming now, you just say, oh, there's all these different options. Where where Mm -hmm. we see it, a 16-bit is retro because it's a throwback to then, where they're seeing it as, oh, this is a new game now and it looks like this. To where it's now an aesthetic, it is not a reflection of the era. So yeah. I've actually I've actually talked to a kid when I was playing uh, like a soup, an SNES ROM on a TV, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Oh wow, it looks like Minecraft." I was like, "Oh shit, no! <laughs> Minecraft looks like Super Mario World. Super Mario World does not look like Minecraft. You've got him backwards, son. Backwards." We're about I, to be I those old backhanded people. him. Yeah, back sent him to his room day. without dinner. Well, okay. Uh, last night, Tom's playing um, Overwatch with a guy from the Discord. Mm-hmm. And um, we're talking, and Tom's like, yeah, this is, like, super easy to pick up. I'm like, well, yeah, if you played a shooter. And he's like, yeah, everyone's played shooters. It's just super easy to pick <laughs> up. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I'm like, it wouldn't be if it's your first. And this kid he's playing with is like, yeah, I didn't think it was too easy. And I'm like, have you played any shooters before? He's like, no, this is my first time playing a game where you're, like, shooting people. It's so, like, I mean, it's, it's this entire thing where we're <laughs> taking for granted what we're so used to. Mm-hmm. And then we never view it as, what if it's your first ever time playing this type of game yeah. and you're thrown into right. this? yeah. Yeah, there there are definitely I, I want to see going forward the uh, the the disparity. So I was playing Stardew Valley, which is a farming style of game that 
did come out way long ago in the Harvest Moon series that kind of vanished a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. It continued on in small ways, uh, but never really anything giant. And Stardew Valley comes out and it's like, hey, fuck you. This is Harvest Moon done today. But it's still got an old school feel of you jump into it and they're like, oh, hey, go meet the townspeople. And by the way, your farm is filled with like trees and rocks and shit. So clear that out, I guess. <laughs> no controls, no pop ups saying, hey, use this button to do this thing. No, nothing. Right. There's a little intro cutscene that they do let you skip. But I honestly wanted a little bit more handholding because I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Like I laid out some some plots of land and I was like, I guess I'll put a seed in and water it. Oh, look, they're kind of kind of growing over a couple days. I guess I'm doing OK, but I still have no idea what I'm doing. Tom is what's wrong with society today. He doesn't know how things are made. Yeah, like, where, where's this lettuce come from? What, what do you mean? I put a seed in the ground and <laughs> like, water. I, I think I think I'm doing okay, right? And then I walk into this place. And I've got no idea what I'm doing. It's got a very old school retro feel, and where most of the gameplay is discovery and figuring out how things work for yourself. But I went into Stardew Valley expecting a little bit more handholding than that. It was kind of jarring. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's good or bad either way. I just wish there was a checkbox that said, I'm a dumb millennial, please give me the hints. And <laughs> another checkbox that says, you know, I'm hardcore, just throw me into the damn game, no cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is that no cutscene button, but there is no tutorial or anything. Oh, there's the skip intro uh, button. There, but. there is the skip intro button. Um it works really well on the Switch. So I have both Axiom Verge and Stardew Valley on Steam. I can play mm-hmm. them whenever, but I was never able to get into it because every time I'm at my computer, I can play Overwatch or Dota or Doom or Star Wars mm-hmm. Battlefront 2 or any of these big hardcore games. But when I'm on the bus, I got Mario Kart. So I bought them on the Switch, and now I can play Stardew whenever. And I've been playing a shit ton of Stardew. Are you comparing indie startup like 16 bit games in Mario Kart. I, so what I'm what I'm saying is that <laughs> so I'm like those are like way I'm, I'm different running, standards. I'm running out of bus games. I'm running out of bus games so I can sit there on the bus with my Switch and go to work while playing video games. Get has been heroes and you'll be good for the next two years. I don't like has been heroes. Too I hard? said it. I just I don't know. It's repetitive. <laughs> I get it's supposed to be. I just don't like it. You're about to play Stardew Valley and you're talking about repetitive. But that's different because how I many can, times can you water a plant? Apparently I get <laughs> but I water them in the morning and then I go fishing or I talk to whatever carpenter lady and figure out how to give her like a blue flower or something to marry her. And now I've got to clear out some trees and I can do some adventuring and there's a mine. Do it's work. Crazy. And there's there's a wizard tower. I just saw it on the map. I've never been there. So here's what it comes down to. It's like life. Do work. Talk to a woman, go to bed. It's all Stardew is. I'm okay. Or, with that. or, or maybe talk to a guy. You know, either yeah, way, what, but, whatever. But whatever that's all it is. Your boat. I'm okay with this. It is a chill game. Oh, it is. I it's love really it. Really chill. I'm just, I'm just saying, it is kind of repetitive in itself. Though I'll, I'll play like you know an hour of Axiom Verge, and then I'll need three hours of Stardew to bring myself down. <laughs> no, I do want to have one gripe about Stardew. I love the game, but my God, the um, the button layout is counterintuitive oh, as hell. It is trash. So you, Axiom Verge has got a bad button layout, too. A lot of this stems uh, from Nintendo. The B Nintendo. button is your confirm. Yeah, that, yeah. that is a Nintendo-centric thing. The it Nintendo is. Switch for mm. the PlayStation and the Xbox, you have the B or the circle button tends to be back, maybe the triangle button sometimes. I'm going to learn you. So, originally, the designer of the PlayStation controller... Each of these buttons had a function, right? But circle was supposed to be confirm and X was supposed to be cancel. And that's why Mm -hmm. in the original Metal Gear Solid, when you press circle, that means yes. And it is backwards in every other game because everyone else wanted the bottom button. I remember that specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Because it makes more sense. It does make more sense. I completely agree with you, but that's not always the way things work. But with a circle and a cross. You gave one reference. It makes sense when when you look at the things, right? It makes sense when you look at the glyphs. Yes. But however, I don't care how it was intended. It's how it's used. Yeah. And it has been used for well over a decade of actually getting it two decades of the bottom button. I am am blaming Microsoft for switching the buttons that Nintendo laid out originally that God's hand laid out on the (laughs) SNES controller. That is the way buttons are supposed to be. And someone at Microsoft said, no, I know better. You do not, sir. That is blasphemy. Actually, the um, 360 controller is possibly one of the best controllers ever made. 
D-pad. Okay. Yeah. D-pad. That's, I, that's, I don't need a D-pad. too bad of a D-pad. I don't to... need... D-pad. No, no, I'm just saying like the layout, the aesthetic of that controller, how it feels was gold. That's the reason yeah. that the, any, or the pro controller is what it is. But either way. Um, yeah. But yeah, the um, normal action button is a menu button. Your uh, left button is your action button, as well as your right button is action button for certain things. Not everything, but certain oh, things God. the right button is. <laughs> that yeah. sounds like a nightmare. I, I will That's always, terrible. like when trying to do something and having not, like when I first put up the game, I will go to do something and I will open a menu. Always. Yeah. 100% of the time. It is mm. really annoying. And I, is there a rebind option? I haven't looked. I haven't checked yet. Okay. I've only gotten a couple of days in on it. Yeah. I, yeah. <sighs> But yeah, it's, it's not, it's, it's not fun. good, but it's, it's fun. It's, it's a good port. I think so far, I, again, I didn't play much of the PC version. I'm going to have my wife play the switch version and she will tell me, Oh my God, this is trash. Go to PC and you can get like hundreds of mods. I think she's got 12 gigs of Skyrim mods. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if she's Whoa. approaching like five gigs of Stardew Valley mods or something. So nice. uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have her play it and tell me if it's a good port or not, because I don't know. Uh, but Erk, <laughs> other than Stardew, what have you been playing? So, um, pretty much everything I've played, y'all have talked about. Um, I did a little more of the, uh, to the Erk side of the moon with my Kerbal Did you kill stream. him? Did you kill him? I have not retrieved him yet. Damn it. I almost had oh. all my science done. I had this, like, this huge science thing coming in with, like, 60-some science. I'm like, fuck yes, I get this. I get my ladder. That's right. I have to research a ladder <laughs> while I'm launching fucking rockets into space. Um, but so I got this um, ship out to the moon. I'm coming back, coming back. And I'm like, okay, here we go. I'm, launch- I'm using my little bit of fuel left to get back out of the moon. I miscalculated. I sent my fucking ship into orbit around the sun and completely <laughs> left the Earth's orbit. <laughs> So at this point, I have the Whoops. ship in the Earth's orbit overlapped a little bit to where if I leave it on fast forward for probably about five days, eventually they'll collide. So, yeah, I, I pretty much stranded another astronaut out there, but that one's not coming back. Ugh. He's dead. He will never, <laughs> he will never see the light of Kerbin again. Mm. Um, but other Great. than that, um, I did pick up another game. Um, it's a oh. new game. It's an old game. It's a fun oh. game. Everyone, I think, listening to this it's an old game. enjoyed it's a new this game. game. It's a red Blake game. It's a blue game. It's a Dr. Seuss <laughs> game. No. Um, hey. I picked up Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic. Oh. So what this is, is a mashup of the true to heart Roller Coaster Tycoons, that being one and two. So it is the, the actual worlds from one with some slight tweaks and then it's the actual themes and stuff from two with some slight tweaks. They don't blend. When you're playing mm-hmm. a park from one, you don't get the ATM machine from two, which was the only thing that one was missing. If Rockers Tycoon had, one had an ATM machine, I would have never played two. But, and then you have the worlds from two as well. And they give you like some different ways to unlock the different worlds. It's really fun. I was feeling a good builder and I'm like, holy shit, this just launched two weeks ago. How did I not know this? Is it the old school isometric pixely graphics? It is the okay. old game. Nice. Ooh, it nice. is the old game. It is actually done by them. Okay. Uh, by Atari, Chris Sawyer, blah, 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 all that stuff. And it is literally one plus two. So you haven't played Planet Coaster though, have you? No, I have not. I was about okay. to bring that up. But yeah, that, I, was, I was about to compare and contrast these. Those are a little different though. Um, <clears throat> because, I mean, we're talking a not hyper-realistic roller coaster sim to a really, really good, the aesthetics matter roller coaster sim. That mm-hmm. said, I have heard great things about Planet Coaster. Such okay. good things. And I will get that at some point. But yeah, that's, that took a little bit of my time. It was really fun because I was watching some football on Sunday and it's literally like, oh, let's set up these rides. Oh, a play's happening? I don't even have to pause. Let me watch this play. Okay, come back to building this coaster. <laughs> It, it was really fun to get back to that. So we've, we've got some comments on your on your Kerbal in chat. Farkas says, uh, you said he was orbiting the sun, right? I think it's more appropriate to say that he will never not see light again. And then, of course, <laughs> I had to bust him with Smash Mouth's walking on the sun. Because well, he, why not? Yeah, yeah, fuck off. Yes, he will <laughs> always be in the light of the sun until he collides into a planet and dies violently. But. Yeah. Yeah. Happy um, times. And um, AOL Instant Messenger does pull out a good point. They're probably doing this 
game Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic because Roller Coaster Tycoon World, I think, was the last launch, and it did not receive well because it also launched against Planet Coaster, which yeah. is seen as the spiritual successor to Roller Coaster Tycoon. So why... I've, I've, got, a, I've got a small topic to bring up. Why on earth... Can the teams that created these classic games that we grew up with, we know and love, right? We've got Roller Coaster Tycoon, we've got Sim City, uh, we've got Civilization, we've got all these games, and then when they make new games, they are so trash. And then, and then, maybe Civ was a bad example. There you go. I was going to okay. say, I'm like, one of those does not fit in that conversation. <laughs> maybe Civ is a bad example. One Civ Five without expansions like wasn't good. It was okay. It just wasn't as big as it was with the expansions. The expansions right. were monstrous. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. okay. You you take Roller Coaster Tycoon and SimCity, and then you, we've got the brand new versions of these coming out, and they are trash. But we've got indie startups coming out, and they said, hey, we know what these games are. We grew up with these games, and we can build you a better Roller Coaster Tycoon and a better Sim City. And they mm-hmm. did, and they sold like fucking hotcakes. City Skylines yeah. is the best Sim City game I've ever played. Right? Planet Coaster is getting crazy amounts of hot, awesome press because it is mm-hmm. the best Roller Coaster Tycoon game that's ever been made. Why on earth can't the original companies that created this stuff make decent games? Okay, I can give you a couple reasons. Okay, because initially you have a mm-hmm. development team 15 years ago you had a development team that made roller coaster tycoon i get it's not they the were same probably people. there I, I actually think planet coaster was some of the people from the initial one i think okay. i think mm-hmm. i heard that that that's hearsay i don't know but i think that was part of the storyline with it but i mean you had different people and you're also you have to remember you have an aesthetic that is very old when you're about to drop a lot of money on a brand new game as a big triple a publisher it is really hard to convince people. Let's stay with this old, gringy-looking aesthetic. Oh, not that. Mm-hmm. No, because Planet Coaster is beautiful. City Skylines mm-hmm. is beautiful. Beautiful in a really functional way. City Skylines, yes, I can agree, because you can change the aesthetic to SimCity pretty easily. But Roller Coaster Tycoon, that, that doesn't play like a Roller Coaster Tycoon game, necessarily. I mean, it, it's not the same isometric lock. Oh, it's, it's, not, it's not exactly the same, but... It feels how the old ones felt. It's a builder. It's not just a builder, though. There's plenty of builders. It, there's, there's a big difference between a game that feels right, City Skylines, and a game that feels like trash, SimCity 5. I never did play 5. I think 3000 was the last one I played. Yeah, it, no, it's, or I touched 4. I did 4 a little bit. Yeah, 4, four was okay, kind of. Three, three was the best of the Sim Cities. Three thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. I still. So there's actually an internet radio channel of Sim City three thousand music on a loop, and I will I will listen to that <laughs> occasionally at work. It is it is so good. Okay. And with that, I think we pretty much covered our week because other than did we talk about Cuphead? Yeah. We should yeah. talk about we Cuphead some more. Cuphead. Oh, okay. Cuphead's good. All right. Yeah. There's a really cool aesthetic game called Cuphead. It's old school and jazzy. Yeah. Goodbye. Excellent yeah. work. Good job, everybody. Um, so we did it. We're going to start the news off with something that will probably get Tom and I a little heated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Sony uh, has announced it's releasing a new uh, VR headset. Um, a lot of this is to do with so the PS4 Pro supports HDR. For those of you who don't know, it's a different resolution type on top of 4K that it gives you better picture qualities. Um, for the HDR, they have a special uh, thing you have to do with VR where you have to bypass their breakout box that they use for VR. So Sony is making a new headset that has some processing power in the headset and a new breakout box so you can actually not have to bypass the breakout box for HDR. So in other words, you have this set up, you never have to mess with it again. On the old one, if you had your VR set up and you wanted to do an HDR game, you had to unhook your VR and hook it back into the TV. So it was a little bit of a pain. So they mm-hmm. fixed it. The issue is they fixed it within a year with no backwards compatibility. So everyone who went out and spent $400 on a PSVR V1 less than a year later is getting burnt because V2 is coming out and they can't use any of the hardware from it. Dear Sony, this oh, is wow. how you kill VR on your platform. Love, Tom. <laughs> That's exactly why people didn't want to buy into the Vive initially. Granted, half the price, so it's not as big. But people were afraid if I buy into the Vive now, the new one's going to come out in a year, year and a half, and I'm going to be burnt. So, so why? 
I, I have seen concessions made like this with certain designs, but it still never makes sense to me. Why do you release a product that is that shitty? Right? You know this is a limitation. You have documentation around this limitation, but you're still going to push your fucking product anyway, despite this really shitty limitation. And then, then instead of owning it, you, you fucking release a V2 and say, yeah, please pay for it. At the very least, they could say, hey, if you ship back your old headset, we'll give you this one for free because you're a VR early adopter. You believed in us. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Or pay for shipping in 25 bucks. Here you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, something. Just give, give some sort of concession to the people who brought up PlayStation VR from the start. The people who are playing VR with a fucking move controller, for God's sake. Yeah, come on. The experience wasn't great to begin with. It, throw these guys a bone. This is fucking shitty. So clearly, the only true VR system is the Vive. <laughs> uh, oculus too but we won't go there but the cool thing is yeah. they do have uh internal heads uh, the headphones with it so the headphones are actually part of the system i now. actually don't like mm. that you still can plug in your own if you want oh oh so you can detach them they're not detachable they're earbud style yeah so they just kind of like hey Ugh. well i shouldn't say they're not detachable i don't know that for sure but Ugh. yeah they're there that's that's one thing i never liked about the oculus's design because i mean we've we've all blown out an ear on a headphone right we've all had like a single side die whether it's a cord or whatever die in a piece of audio equipment and you know what's great about it you can buy another one and plug it in but if it's part of your 800 dollars vr headset or your 400 hundred dollar vr headset that royally sucks because now you're stuck with something physically attached to your headset that you cannot get rid of <laughs> yeah, that is kind of like, hey, the, head, the purpose of the headset works. Yeah. The secondary feature that's nice to have is completely fucked and I can't fix it. Yeah. So I, I love the Vive because it's just a big monitor you strap to your face. And my headphones, if my headphones die, I will find new headphones to plug in. Yeah, they do have a nice setup for that. But next piece of news, um, since we don't want to get too on that, there's something about a game about being a goose that's an asshole. So, Tom or Adam, <laughs> any, I need to take this up. Any game about being a goose is a game about being an asshole because all geese are assholes. Amen. Yes. Preach Amen. it. Preach it. <laughs> That's why you shoot them. Yes. Or strangle them. They've got those, they've got those skinny goose necks, man. Just grab it. <laughs> man, they're That's mean. All you gotta do. Anyway. They so, are mean. Fuck yeah, geese. So this this goose breakdown. game looks like it's supposedly... It combines stealth gameplay and puzzle solving. Which is and on the you play on a small farm and it looks like it's very much, you know, comedy is an aspect of this game, obviously, playing as an angry goose. Um but there's not like a demo or anything yet, but it looks very silly. And at the end of the trailer, they actually tease two geese, which makes me think there might be some multiplayer goose action. We're going to have to pick this that up. That would be cool. We're going to have to be asshole geese multiplayer. So is this like in the vein of Goat Simulator? No. Well, well, I, I would think say the, no. I would say no. Not so much the gameplay, but maybe the humor style. Yeah. Maybe a little less crazy than Goat, so you, Goat you Simulator can, is. You can like take the groundskeeper sandwich out of his, his pack and like put it in the water or, or like put it out in a blanket and have yourself a nice goose picnic. Um, you can hide stuff uh, from the groundskeeper and leave him next to a sprinkler and then go over and turn it on when he gets there, accomplishing your get groundskeeper wet objective. Um, <laughs> I saw one where like you can sneak up to him and then honk and he'll be like, oh, fuck, and you'll scare the shit out of him. It's amazing. Can you get him to like, oh, fuck, and like fall into a pond? Um, I don't know. Probably. Hopefully. Like you um, throw I, a sandwich in the pond. He goes over to investigate it. You walk up behind him, scare him into the pond. So in, in the trailer, there was a, a locked gate to get into like the actual farm or garden area. And as a goose, you can't unlock things because you've got wings. So what you do, you, could, you can't fly in there. But you got wings. Yeah, I know. You can't fly in there. So what you do is you pick up the groundskeeper's radio, which is like next to all of his shit. You turn it on. You start running around with it. He comes out and tries to chase you to get his radio back. And then you sneak in. And now you're in the garden and he can't get you out because you're a fucking asshole goose. <laughs> I need this game. This sounds <laughs> this looks actually really kind of fun. interesting. I need this game in my life. There's nothing I've wanted more than being an asshole goose. 
Uh, yes, so. I don't want to say there's nothing I've wanted more. But nope, that's it. That's the top for me. Well, you have to remember, Tom's kind of an asshole anyway. So. I, if yeah. I had my choice of reincarnation, I'd come back as a goose. I'm federally protected, and I'm a piece of shit. The federal government <laughs> issues a license to kill you. I'd still be an asshole. <laughs> All, right. All the more reason to be. So, oh, did you guys hear about the Battlefront 2 update that just pushed? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the original Battlefront 2. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what? They are now supporting up to 64 player matches. Damn. That, that's they turned the online big. back on, too. Wasn't the online play off for a while? And they you turned can it do back custom on servers, which imagine mm-hmm. that. Dedicated servers in a video game. How modern. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's not modern at all. But yeah, so uh, they I got up- kicked from Overwatch because the host left and I had to migrate and the migration failed and then it dropped everybody. Oh, fuck that. Fuck peer to peer matchmaking. Dedicated servers for life. It's eh, we'll get into that another day. But um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a big update for a big uh, player count update. However, um, I wonder how many of the true to heart people will stay there if they get a feel of this new game and like it. I don't know. Because this new game supports a pretty big amount of players, and it looks beautiful. Yeah. Anyway. I, I actually heard that some people were having a hard time getting those uh, matches and online play to work properly. I don't know mm. if they fixed it, but... They should just install GameSpy. That makes it really easy. <laughs> um, Tom, I'm going to let you take this uh, next news clip about uh, some people duping Sega. <laughs> so, uh, some, some news came out recently. Um... You guys know how certification process works for console games? You have to meet the bar for them to be able to allow you on the platform. Yeah, so what happens is you ship your game to uh, a publisher uh, and or the the console owner, right? For PC, it's really easy. You throw it to Steam, they say, does it crash? Is it malware? Okay, you're good. Um, For consoles, you basically give it to them for weeks, sometimes months at a time, and you let them basically kick the shit out of your game if it ever crashes if it has any weird bugs if it deletes save data like if you do anything even slightly naughty they will deny you certification and you have to go through that weeks or months long process all over again so what this guy did uh is anytime excuse me anytime there was an error in in the code he took all of the error catching and made it, in, in the uh, case of a Mickey Mouse game, he made it take you to a level warp. In the case of Sonic Blast, he actually made it take you to a secret level select menu. So any error actually looked like the reviewer uncovered something hidden in the game, and it wasn't <laughs> actually a crash, even though it totally was a crash. <laughs> yeah. Really cool shit. So you, there's actually Fine. videos online of people like pulling out their Sonic 3D Blast cart and putting it back in the Genesis, and a level select screen will pop up. Huh. Yeah. It's really <laughs> cool. So they basically just caught all of the exceptions and forced them to be actual gameplay features instead of crashing errors. Didn't fix any of the errors, but they didn't have yeah. to because they got this through certification. This is the way of the future. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> They're not errors. They're just happy little accidents. Happy little gameplay features. All right, another little tidbit of news. Uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is now in talks with uh, Sony about a PS4 version. Um, I actually did not get to see much of the details on this. Is this actually for the early access or when it's a full launch? Uh, you know, I do not know. I honestly do not but know. But either way, the important thing is they are working actively with Sony to get on the platform. Yeah. Which will grow already one of the largest Except it's Sony, so they can't cross-play, so they're going to be stuck with, like, six people on there, and everyone who actually wants to play this game will go to PC. Yeah, except for people who don't play on PC. You have to remember... We don't count them. They're not people. They're just the majority. You know, no big deal. Yeah, they're not people. It's okay. <laughs> Fuck them. But either way, yep, they're looking to bring that to Sony. Um, it would be big for them. Really big for them. It would be. And finally, in some breaking news... Nazis don't like it when games kill Nazis. Oh, shit. Should we stop killing Nazis because we're offending Nazis? I, I think that's what's uh, happening. Okay. No, I think we should always kill Nazis. Okay. Let's go with Adam's plan. I like his. Can we just be nice it's, to each other? Historically, no. it's working pretty well we, so we, far. We can't just be nice? No, we have to kill Nazis. Uh, oh. Yeah. How, yeah, how else is 
Wolfenstein supposed to sell any copies of games if you can't kill Nazis? Well, because so, you're in the kitchen all day slaving over a cake that you're going to bring to the Nazi party to make them like you. And then by liking you, they'll like your ideas. And then you solve World War II without firing a bullet because of a cake. That was see, laced you, with arsenic. You should, have, you should have been Churchill back in the day. You, you would have won the World War. <laughs> everyone loves cake. Yeah. As long as the cake's not a lie, everyone loves it. What if, it, what if you, like, you make a carrot like cake. cake and that like, even escalates the conflict even further? Like Somehow another world appears and then you've got the two worlds war. The only way a carrot cake is ever not liked is if Carrot Top is involved with it. Carrot okay. cake I cannot is universally refute this evidence. lost. I cannot refute this carrot evidence. Carrot cake is good. I don't care for the icing most of the time, but my aunt made these carrot cake cupcakes, and the icing, instead of being like regular cream cheese icing, it was like, it tasted like cheesecake. It was so good. I nice. Love, I, I just love carrot cake. This but is obviously way. on topic. So, but. yeah, um, id Software and Bethesda are making Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Uh, it's a game about killing Nazis. 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 Yeah. Now, um, the first in this remake series was really fucking good. Really good. It was great. It played like an old school game. It was wonderful. You could dual wield big ass machine guns and kill Nazis. What more could you want? I mean, other than killing demons with big ass rocket launchers. But they got that too. They already got that niche coming. We got it. We, they got all the niches. They got demons. We need they got Nazis, Nazis. They got killing. You need orcs. If they get some shooting on some orcs, we'd I'd be, be okay in with that. Killing orcs, killing Nazis, same thing, really. Anyway, <laughs> so. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, a bunch, because of political events, I guess, there are Nazis on Twitter and in comment sections getting pissed at Bethesda for making a game where you kill Nazis and where you call Nazis bad names because they're, they're Nazis. Um, they're and you're fighting, you're fighting against Nazis because they're Nazis. There's a lot of complaints that this is like a crazy leftist political conspiracy. Uh, there's a whole lot of really like excellent trolling in these comment sections, just like straight up beautiful trolling. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's in short, some, somebody called this anti-Nazi propaganda and you know what? I'm okay with that. I'd play a game that was anti-Nazi propaganda. I've played lots of World War II games that were anti-Nazi propaganda, where the whole objective was to kill Nazis. You know something that'd be really interesting? I'm sure there's a game out there that's done this, is to play as the Axis. And well, yeah. play as, you know, the Nazis. Medal or- of Honor Allied Assault Multiplayer. No, no, <laughs> I mean, like, actively through the campaign. Oh, Yeah. And actually have maybe one that actually you end up dying or one that's actually alt history. Like you play Wolfenstein. It's an alt history game. It is. Play yeah. as Nazis in World War II. Shouldn't it would be Nazis, such a fun thing to do. It's really weird, but it'd be kind of fun. Shouldn't the Nazis be happy that Wolfenstein's coming out? Because it is alt history where the Nazis won World War II and they've basically taken over the world and the moon. That'd be like the CIA being happy about 1984 being a movie. Yeah, okay. I get that. But yeah. yeah, no, fuck Nazis. We're going to kill some Nazis, and I'm going to get my scalps. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. I, I, think, I think I might have to buy this game as a political message to say that I'm not a Nazi and I hate Nazis. Because if you don't buy Wolfenstein 2, clearly you support Nazis. Absolutely. That's what I'm thinking. If you don't hate them, you're with them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's not flawed lo- logic. logic at all. But anyway... <laughs> Fellas, I think it's time for the rundown. Let's give it a little rundown Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So, letting everyone out there know, if you are watching this live right now, you can go over to our YouTube channel and catch some of our ever-expanding content that we're throwing over there at 72 Pin Connector. If you're watching us over there on our Pin Connector site and watching this YouTube there, which not very many do, but feel free. Um, You can come join us Saturday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern time on our Twitch page of twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector and just come chill and hang out in the chat with us if you think that we're obnoxious that we drone too much or just have some cool topics you like to hear us talk about you can tweet at us at at 72 pc podcast and if you're a barbarian and like to get rss feeds for yeah. your mp3s <laughs> for your um the you know the podcast the best ways. you can go to our website of 72 pin 
Or if you're a modern civil human being, you can go to Stitcher, Pocket Cast, iTunes, Google Play, whatever thing you Boo. want, and go grab your podcast. Fuck you, Tom. People like convenience. Um, <laughs> and uh, with that, I think Adam has a little bit to throw in here. Hopefully, maybe. Yes, I do. We had some followers during the oh, cast. Oh, shit. So let's thank Were they all Nazis? These people. Not that I'm aware of, but okay. you know, we'll we're be gonna, investigating. We're going to lean on no, and then we'll <laughs> beg for forgiveness if so later. Okay, cool. Yes. All right, Ferd Skawa, Far Cause, we know you, hello. Flavio Molina Bello, Boomy35, Trinity SSJ3, 228858, Amber Rose Nason. Thank you for following. Yes. That's a lot yeah. of people. Thank you. Thank That's you, everybody. Awesome. This is the only way that we ever get people watching. So if you like us, you know, tell your friends, you know. Tell them. Get some people. Tell them. Tell them. But with that... I think it's all we got for you this week. So stick around. Play some Battlefront 2 with us. Yeah, do it. Until next week. Game on. See everybody. Bye.